Hey guys, what's up? This is Bart. Welcome to TST Garage. In this episode, I have a 2019 plus Kawasaki Ninja ZX6R, and I will be showing you how to install some of our Womit Tech crash protection components. Now, the pieces that you're gonna see me install are available as part of a total protection pack, which is a discounted package of all the parts together, and they're also available separately. If you already have some of these pieces from other companies and you just want to supplement some some of the ones that we offer and others don't that's cool this video will guide you through the installation of each and every single one of these components with all the tips and tricks that i've developed over time now i do really believe in the effectiveness of these parts i have tested them myself we also have sponsored riders in motor america azra ccs Daytona 200, overseas in Europe, there's a bunch of teams that use these because Womit Tech, the parent company that makes these parts, actually has multiple different teams that they sponsor. So this is race proven technology. It's been around for many, many years. And um, here at TST Industries, we are the only authorized dealer in the USA that will sell these to you. So without further ado, let's go through a couple of the components that we'll be installing and then we'll get to the install itself. Here at the front, we start with the fork slider. Very effective at protecting your rotor, your wheel lip, also fork bottom. You have all these surfaces that are exposed. This will be your one first point of contact and abrasion surface that is sacrificial. It grinds away as the bike slides, but it keeps the slide damage away from all these components here. Moving back to the frame slider. These frame sliders are pretty short. They're not meant to protrude very, very far. They are designed to be effective at protecting the critical components, your engine cases, your controls. Obviously, no two hits are the same. You're gonna crash a bu bunch of different ways if you're gonna crash. So it's kind of roulette, but we've sort of distilled the happy medium of uh, parameters for producing these parts that make them effective at protecting the crucial components. And you know, your fairings are kind of sacrificial pieces anyway, but what we aim to do is protect the motor, protect your tank, protect as much stuff as we possibly can without undue exposure of forces propagating up the line into the motor and into the frame. Up here, we have our bar ends. They are comprised of aluminum and Delrin parts the delrin obviously takes the hit takes the initial impact energy and then abrades away these are replaceable no big deal back here we have the swing arm spools these are the aluminum type we also have a delrin type of spool that protrudes a little bit different and presents a point where if you do go down you get that first point of impact absorbed a little bit better and then you have a surface that abrades away as you slide we prefer the smaller ones here. There are plenty of other things that take the hit first, but these are a little bit more practical and don't have such a big moment arm. We do offer both, choice is yours. On this bike, we have a bunch of different TST Industries components and the Womit Tech levers. We do wanna protect our investment. So let's get those parts on now. Let's get started. I'm dying to wrench, let's get going. All right, guys, we're gonna start on the table here because I wanna pre-configure our parts the way they come in the box, it's all mishmashed. I wanna show you how to pre-configure them so that we have better success on the bike. It's a lot easier to do it this way. Left, right. This is how I perceive it because if I were riding on the bike, these would be my side. So this goes on the left side of the motorcycle over here and that on the opposite side. I'm gonna show you the part sequence here. So we have a spacer that fits into the puck. These little shoulder spacers come in the puck itself and the whole thing's bagged. So you just remove the bags and put it in and then you put your bolt through. Same thing on this side. And these bolts are actually the same, but the one for the right side of the bike receives this little thick washer first then our shoulder spacer, then the puck, and then this larger diameter boss. Okay, 
So let's just make sure that we can identify the bosses really well. There we go. Okay. Left side boss, solid face, smaller diameter, and puck interface. Right side boss has a series of counter bores in it and is larger diameter and it's shorter. So once we've identified our parts, these things are ready to go back on the bike. And then we just have to wonder, what are these things? Well, we mount these pucks. There's a hole that shows the hardware. These are nice cosmetic caps here that close that out and make it very visually pleasing on the bike. The black ones come standard with the kit. If you care to customize your setup, you can get one of these colors and gem them on in there. And now you have a color match for your bike. This particular bike, we like silver. We've gone with the silver theme on the adjusters, on the levers, and there's a couple different cool silver accents on the bike. So we felt this would best serve our interests of making this cosmetically pleasing. And that's what we're gonna do. Let's jump on the bike and perform our assembly. Before we start cracking fasteners, I wanna mention that it is very important to do one side at a time. If you unbolt both sides of the motor, there is a better chance of it drooping in the frame. And then you have to go through the painstaking process of lifting it up against the weight of the bike and aligning it. You just don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna do this side fully and then go to the next side. I'm gonna start with a 14 millimeter socket. Crack this bolt loose and then take it out completely. I'm gonna switch over to a 17 millimeter socket. Get my Womatec parts, get them aligned. And I'm gonna engage that thread. And try to go as far as I can go, just by hand. All right. Let's bottom it out a little bit. And now I'm gonna switch to my torque wrench. I've preset it to 29.5 foot pounds. That will be 40 Newton meters for our brothers that use metric. And that's it. Let me grab a cap. I like to align the logo so that it is parallel to the ground. Also, if you have a preference as to how this text displays here, you wanna pre-clock it before you tighten it down, that will lock it in place and won't move. Once you have this guy aligned, you just press it in, make sure that it's seated fully, and we're good to go to the other side. Here on this side, the process is largely the same. I'm gonna start with a 14 millimeter socket. This side does appear to have a little bit more friction than the left side. That's still okay, it's still coming out clean. No big deal. Here it becomes evident why we have the counter bores. There's an adjustment mechanism here two different diameters here, fit all inside our spacer. Engage that thread by hand, then switch to my 17 millimeter socket. Get that bottomed out. Grab the torque wrench, same setting. and finish up with the cap. After this, we'll move on to the fork slider. All right. On the fork slider installation, the first part will be to select the appropriate size puck. Obviously on this side, we need the bigger diameter. And then on this side, we need the smaller diameter. Knowing that, I'm gonna pre-configure one side here I'll need the rod and one of the bolts. These bolts are exactly the same, so no worries there. These fasteners use a six millimeter Allen tool. What I like to do is 
get the first one turned in pretty tight and then the other side just goes into that from the other side of the axle. Here's a quick tip for you guys. If you're gonna be using this in a race setting, I would recommend putting a pretty good amount of Loctite on one side. This way, this becomes a module and then you're just cracking loose and taking off the other side. And it always works the same way. So this is a pretty good tip for those of you guys that need to do this in a speedy fashion. Uh, if you don't, or if you don't have Loctite, no worries there. We've used these like that too. All right, so large diameter goes through and then we cap, cap this off on the other side with a bolt and the small diameter. Engage the threads by hand. Bottom out. Now I'm just gonna torque it down to 8.8 .8 .8 foot pounds of torque. That's 12 Newton meters. You don't necessarily have to torque this down, but for consistency's sake, I'm torquing all the bolts that are sensible last part here this is completely optional we are given two different color stickers i like to use these because they have a nice little accent the red doesn't really match anything here we're going to go with this pearly silvery white typically do this with a tiny screwdriver or a pick this enables me to center the sticker just press it in and it's good to go do this on the other side as well. Now let's go for barns. All right, this is how the Omnitech barns arrive to you. You have the black anodized ring on top of the aluminum base with the Delrin cap. We do sell different color anodized rings. So if you've made that selection during your purchase, a new color has been provided in the box for you. You'll have to change it during installation. We'll get a five millimeter Allen on this screw here. Take that off. We'll remove our colored ring. Now this will be ready for reinstallation. We've chosen silver for this bike. So we'll just slip that on after we get this base in. Let's grab a six millimeter Allen. Get this guy cracked loose. Now I need a 17 millimeter socket for that. Your bar end kit does arrive with a little silver spacer that is meant for the right side by the throttle. Do not use it on this side. I'll explain that in just a little bit. Let's get these threads engaged by hand. Can actually spin it in until it bottoms out. Using a 22 millimeter socket, I will turn this tight. And now using the ring of our choice insert that over cap it with our delrin cap five millimeter allen tightens it all together uh, this side's good let's go for throttle side okay now on the right side of the bike we'll once again use a six millimeter allen these are sometimes very tight from the factory because they use a lot of thread locking agent on the threads once you get it out, you can see all that thread lock. Once the outer portion comes out, we're gonna use a 17 millimeter socket to crack this guy loose and get it out completely. Now when this comes out, you'll notice that the bar is inset from your throttle tube end. If we were to just mistakenly put on the other side um, bar end on this side without the provided spacer, you would most likely just lock down on that throttle tube and it wouldn't move. So this is why we provide the little spacer. It goes in here and provides enough clearance for this throttle tube to be free spinning. Now we get the base of our bar end. Make sure that our spacer is on there. And if you are going to change the color of the ring, this is a perfect time to do so. We'll grab a 22 millimeter socket, turn this part in, and then bottom it out. 
Now we get the Delrin cap with the screw and we're gonna use a five millimeter Allen. Turn this in and make sure that we are not by some freaky chance binding up the throttle tube. All right, that side's done. Let's keep moving forward. All right, guys, we are now up to the last element here. We're gonna install our spools. Before I actually install them, I wanna talk about it really br briefly. Like I said in the intro, we've chosen the aluminum ones in black. They do exist in a couple different colors. If you like to customize colors, these are the colors we currently have. From time to time, we'll have silver as well. Also wanted to mention, we do have the larger spools that are made of Delrin. If that's your flavor, those are always in stock as well. So the installation procedure for these is really easy. Some guys like to put thread locking agent on these. I never really do, I just use proper torque. Just turn them in with a six millimeter Allen, 18 foot pounds of torque, and that's it. I'm gonna do the other side and this in entire installation will be complete. All right, we are done. Now the bike's protected. I have no qualms about taking it to the track and ripping it around without something in the back of my head that I'm gonna destroy everything. Obviously, I could still flip it, throw it into a fence, throw it into a pond, who knows? I could still destroy it, but these elements that we've just mounted will definitely decrease the likelihood that I will crack open my motor case or scratch up my wheels or bend my vital parts. Anyway, I think I'm just rambling on here. You guys don't wanna hear that. You wanna to go to tstindustries.com and check out all these parts and maybe some other parts that we have for your bike. So, link will be provided in the description. I hope you'll consider mashing that subscribe button, giving us a thumbs up or something like that. I also like to hear comments from you guys. We do what we do because of you, so throw us some comments. Love you guys, see you later, ride safe.